everybody folks uh, we're here looking at our bluebird wander lodge um, I had a couple of people have asked me questions about my chassis heat system um, and I just wanted to kind of go over that this is a 1984 PT40 um, it'll probably work for later models too um, but I just wanted to kind of go over what I did with the chassis heat uh, system and the modifications I made to it so that's what this video is going to be about. So we're here at the back of the engine. And what I'm going to show you, let me see if I can get the lights to come on. It's not much of a help. But what I want to show you is what I've done with these, these chassis heat lines. So um, originally there was a bracket here with a couple pumps mounted on it. And so I got rid of all of that. Um, and then you have several cooling lines that come off the engine there's one here i believe some of them even have one on the back side of this pump back here give it a single change uh, some of them have a, i think a return there maybe possibly um, there's one down here this is the actual return let me see if i can get this thing to capture this here there it is. Okay. So it's a little bright sun out here. But. So that's the return going into the bottom hose coming off of the pump. So that's where the, all the... So what I did was, there's also one over here on this side of the engine. And this one I just have capped off. It's not being used anymore. So what I did was I just came out of here. This is pressurized side this thing is having a tough time focusing here so I came out of this pressurized side it comes out and it goes down into this uh, heat exchanger and I'll link an ad or link this heat exchanger in the description um, so it comes out hits this heat exchanger and if you notice it's on the same side so one side of the heat exchanger is isolated from the other side these two so these two are common and these two are common and they don't touch each other but the, you know th that's how a heat exchanger works basically you can transfer the heat without the two fluids uh, you know passing through each other so right now there's no pumps in these loops to the engine the engine coolant circulates just fine through these and keeps this very hot I have not had any issues I've traveled in minus 17 degrees and the heater barely cycled on and off. So that's the engine loop. So that's the only, from now on now, my chassis heat only comes out of the engine there, comes down, goes through that heat exchanger, and then comes back, and then goes back into the engine. That's the only external uh, cooling line for chassis heat that I have. And so now I can come back here and that, the reason I did this was so I can come back here and I can look at all the engine cooling houses and make sure that I have peace of mind that none of my engine cooling system is compromised. Um, so it makes it very easy. With the old chassis heat system, these lines ran all the way to the front of the bus, which is what we tapped into. But um, if you had a leak up there, you know, you'd lose the coolant to your engine. So that's why I did it this way. Um, so what happens now is I have a separate, this small little reservoir here that I added, um, and I can link the description of this guy. So I added this guy and then this guy goes down and I have two of these pumps. These are AC Delco pumps. Uh, there's one there and there's one down there. So those two tie into the original power, the switches for the chassis heat and for the front heat. And I'll show you in the front where those switches are later. So that's why these tee off. So one pump feeds one loop and the other pump feeds the other loop. And then they come back and both, uh, there's a T down there. So they both return here. And then this little line is the line coming off of uh, that's a balance line. I have two balance lines for that uh, 
reservoir. So if it, you know, overflows or whatever to come back through that line, it's like a feed line and an overflow line, essentially. Um, the one thing I did run into, and I tried to, and I don't use this pump, because if you look now, this pump comes up and goes up top, and that goes to the water heater, and then comes back down. Well, with this being below the level of the water heater, that doesn't really work. So that is the only issue that I've had with this design. I don't really use this pump and this is for the front heat, so it's not that big a deal. You don't really need it, um, but I was just gonna actually bypass the hot water heater for now um, and just not use that hot water heater. Um, the only way to really do that would be you'd have to move this reservoir up above the height of the water heater, which is way up inside the bus, you know, in the back corner of the bus. So then you'd be adding the coolant for this system way in the back corner inside the bus. So, I don't know, that's the only thing that I haven't really messed with, but overall the system works good. Like I said, this lower pump circulates to the chassis heat system, and I'll show you inside which, which two systems there are and where the switches are and what operates what and how that all works. Um, but yeah, that's essentially the plumbing back here. And I'm going to get a photo of this because I haven't gotten a photo of this since I did it. But. All right, so we'll start up front here in the driver's position. So the first thing you're going to want to know about is... Let's see. I can get this thing to focus here. Okay, there's are these two switches in the overhead. Now, I don't know if these are the same on every year. Um, I don't really know. Um, but so this is the summer winter switch. So that has to be moved to the winter position to activate the the chassis heaters. This aux pump is also for those chassis heaters. So that's the lower pump. That's for, I'll show you the heaters that are in the cabin, let's call it, you know, there's three of them in the, the heat exchangers that are inside the bus. Um, so there's also on the dash, see this thing is having a hard time focusing. There are front heat, so right here. So these guys are for the front heat, and then there's a front heat on-off switch. That is for the other pump. So that works on for the pump just for up front. So basically there's two loops. One loop comes up here to the dash and feeds two heater cores, or two, uh, one heater core up here with two fans. There's two fans, one for the driver uh, and one for the passenger but it uses a common heater core, I believe. Um, but that, this front heat switch is actually for the pump. So that controls one pump, and then this one up here, aux pump, controls the other pump. Why they didn't label them both pump, I don't know. But And then again, like I said, this summer winter switch has to be on winter for these pumps to work, and then also for the chassis heat uh, system to work. So we'll come back here on my bus. This is uh, right alongside the kitchen. Oh, I think this, I don't know if my manual, it's on manual focus or something. But anyways, sorry. Um, so I have this little, it's called chassis heat. So there's a switch on the bottom. You gotta turn it on. I leave mine on actually all the time and I use the switch up front to turn it on and off. And of course it's like any other uh, thermostat with the temperature control on top. So that controls, once you have that summer winter switch on winter, the pump on to circulate the hot water, then you have sets of switches up under, let's see if we can find that set here. 
it's going to be too dark probably, but I'll find some other ones. But these are on off and then high and low for the fan. So those are for the chassis heat. So you got to have that in the on position and then pick the fan speed. Uh, come back here where there's one where you, maybe you can see it better. Don't mind my knees. So mine has one in the front under the couch and then there's one here under the dinette. You can see right there. Here and then one in the bedroom. Turn this light on. So mine is right down there. So this will give you better on off again, high low. So that's what those little black switches are. That's for the chassis heat. So there's three of them. There'll be a little intake van and then this is where the hot air blows out. Um, so that's the heat exchangers. So those three are controlled by that thermostat in the kitchen here, or on the wall. So again, like I said, so this has to be on, your temperature has to be set. The ones in the floor have to be turned on, uh, you know, to on and, you know, high or low. Each of those, the ignition has to be running as well. That's why nothing is coming on right now. So your ignition switch has to be on. And then you have to turn on, again, summer, winter to winter, and the pump on. Um, so that's how that system works. Hope that explains everything. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. Like I said, I'll link everything I... Um, purchase for this project um, in the description uh, so that you have the information but uh, like I said if you have any questions feel free to ask them in the comments and I'll answer whatever I can um, if you have more questions there's lots of people on the Wander Lodge owners group if you haven't been on their um, forum and you can find out information there as well so thanks for watching I uh, appreciate it